Today I'm here to tell you about the most bizarre variety show that may have ever existed. In the 1970s, writer-director Enzo Trapani claimed he received a strange phone call in the middle of the night. A man, talking in a polite tone, apologized for calling so late, then complained about the lack of representation he had on television. He asked why nobody was writing a show about him. You see, he concluded, I am the devil. Previously, Trapani had created the first Italian musical program catered to a younger audience in the series Alta Pressione. Trapani had began developing his idea for a new show and said, be gone milquetoast rhythms and family-friendly songstresses with round cheeks and heart-shaped mouths. What evolved from this story is Strix, which premiered in October of 1978 on channel Rai Due. Arriba! Color TV was becoming available in more Italian households, and Trapani decided to use Strix as a vessel for new technologies. Chroma key, distorting lenses, dry ice, and mock 3D special effects were all utilized to make the show a visual spectacle. The name itself was inspired by Striga, a legendary animal with etymological ties to the word witch. The show featured medieval sets, topless dancers, paganism, mock human sacrifice, a chimpanzee, this puppet, the underworld, the devil, and of course, disco. Here's a quick sample. Give a bit of mm to me, and I give a bit of mm to you. I'm on the road again. The show featured acting as well as musical performances from a diverse range of artists. Celebrating the devil, the series had a procession of demons, goblins, and dancers that would enter the stage. Sometimes an expert in Neapolitan lore would explain the fundamentals of palmistry, Kabbalah, or Tessology. Trapani felt that the show embraced the darkness of show business. He said, performers have always been dear to the devil. Up until very recently, they could not be buried on sacred ground. However, the real star of the show here is disco, specifically Italo disco. Welcome home, Lil Abner and Snoopy. Tarzan, great to see you again. Oh, yes. Yeah. You'll see a mandolier, entertainer, and gay icon who was amused to David Bowie and Salvador Dali in the 1960s, who reinvented herself as a disco queen in Europe in the 1970s. The performer possibly best known to US audiences was Grace Jones. <laughs> While you're looking at these visuals, I just want to emphasize that this aired three years before MTV would even make its debut. To give you some context, Rai is a free-to-air public broadcasting channel in Italy similar to PBS in the United States. With multiple channels, it has news, variety shows, and children's programming, among other offerings, and has often held close ties to political parties. Rai actually had an important historical role in Italy, as it was used to create a sense of national identity and unity for reconstruction after World War II, closely tied to the Christian Democratic Party, largely determined to uphold tradition. In the 70s, Rai Due was created to be a little bit more experimental. Medieval-inspired atmospheres and nudity were not completely new to Italian audiences. The 1970s saw a few medieval-themed shows, and nudity had actually appeared on TV in 1976 on another program. However, after the first episode of Streaks premiered, Rai was inundated with phone calls from outraged viewers regarding both the nudity and Satanism, despite positive feedback from critics. The director of the network, Massimo Fichera, tried to defend himself by stating, Our nudes are never free. They start from a cultural position. The nude does not equate to evil, to sin. Il diavolo ha una maschera sul terretano. Tutti gliela guardano in modo strano. Viewership for the show peaked at 9 million, which was considered disappointing for a prime time slot, and it was cancelled after only six episodes. 
To this day, there remains an unreleased seventh episode. As for the director, Enzo's next project was called Cera Due Volte, Twice Upon a Time. That was about fairy tales retold in absurd ways. No, not by Shelley Duvall, but by porn star and politician Ilona Stoller. But he was apparently haunted by paranoid thoughts of aging and of being unable to turn his ideas into TV shows. He would ultimately take his own life in 1989. Perhaps he would have appreciated concluding with something morbid, but I'd like to end this by saying that I'd really love to bring more attention to this innovative labor of love. Check it out if you can, even if you can't understand it, there is a lot to take in. Oh yes. Yeah.